Okay, it's time to lift off the press uh, some headlines that our national dailies or some of our national dailies have this morning. And we're glad to be joined by Professor Chris Mustafa Nwokobia, Jr., Convener Country First Movement. Good morning and welcome to the program, Prof. Good morning. The pleasure is mine. Mm. Uh, you have been going around the country. You have been speaking to people and trying to make our country better. Thank you for that. Um, we're beginning with the Guardian newspaper this morning, and the leading headlines on the Guardian newspaper is uh, Nigeria spends about 50% of oil earnings on production cost. It just caught me that we're, we're spending almost everything that we are getting from oil production on the cost of production. It's a worrisome information. I, sometimes when I look at this information, when I hear the NMPC Limited and their uh, subsidiaries talk, I, I wonder whether they think that they're talking to people who uh, are not informed or people who cannot ask questions. You can just simply go to the internet to find out what... Uh, are we saying that we do not have partners who are involved in the drilling of crude oil, because almost always the fact is clear before us that um, we do not basically refine. We have our refining cap capacity is very, very minimal. And so most often what we export is crude oil. And then uh, that's why we have the subsidy regime that we're talking about and asking the government to come plain before the Nigerian people and actually tell us uh, how much uh, million liters of fuel will consume daily. So when the NMPC Limited tells us that they spend about 50% of oil uh, earnings on production, you ask production of what? Uh, is it the production of the same crude that they have facilities uh, and they collaborate with uh, other multinationals to drill? Uh, who do they pay those monies to and for what reason? You know, and I think that the time has come uh, for us as a nation to engage in it holistic forensic analysis of what obtains in the oil sector, uh, particularly now that we have an economic downturn that is uh, strangulating and making Nigerians worry so much. I, I dispute the figures, and the internet is there to tell us exactly how fallacious it is. Okay, well, let's say that human resources gets up to 38%, logistics 19%, handling costs 13%, Direct lifting, 9%. Security costs is there. Regulatory and other auxiliary costs are there and all that. That's why they got, that, that's what got uh, that amount of money. But do you think that the new directive that um, the central bank should be in charge of the monies uh, coming from oil exportation and all that uh, is a solution to uh, these problems that we are facing? No, it would do a lot. Uh, I tell you, uh, fundamentally, if the central bank is, um, if the NMPC Limited and its subsidiaries are made to pay every earnings and claims to the central bank, they will have to raise a voucher or a payment document for the charges uh, or the cost of production. So I think that fundamentally uh, it will help. But above all, and that uh, perhaps is why most of the headlines of the papers today are exciting for me. Above all, is a need for a holistic overhaul of how we do business in this country, how government does business, and how we manage our resources as a people. Uh, you ask yourself, human resource for um, production of crude oil, because we barely, like I said, we barely refine. And human resource stands at about 38%. <laughs> you ask yourself, um, is, are you paying for your uh, partner companies that are involved in the drilling of food? Are you paying Mobile? Are you paying Shell? Are you paying Emzo? Are you paying, uh, who are you paying all that? The NMPC staffs who uh, largely are redundant? I, I think that the time has come for us to ask very strong questions. You cannot be complaining about economic downturn, and then you have your resources being wasted in the name of uh, production cost of what you truly, truly know how these things come about. 
Mm, okay, well, perhaps this uh, other story, which is in the Punch, we're, we're not leaving Guardian yet, but a story on the, on, the, on the Punch newspaper says subsidy removal petrol import crashes by 990 million liters monthly. And you were disputing the facts on uh, the, the figures on the Guardian when they were talking about all these things. Do you believe in these figures uh, being quoted by the Punch? 990 million liters monthly uh, as a crash. You know, let me let me make you laugh, my brother. And Nigerians are, like I said in my opening remark, we are not in a country of uh, uh, of nitwits. We are not a country of people who do not think. And that is why the media is doing a great job of uh, putting these things before us. Let me tell you clearly, uh, which is fundamentally important here. Um, we have almost as much as seven different figures of uh, how much uh, liters of crude oil, of fear will consume daily in Nigeria. Um, the NMPC will tell you it's 46 million liters. The DPR will tell you it's uh, 58 million liters. You have as, as many as uh, eight different figures. I, I'll try to get it at the cost of uh, this interview. And you ask yourself, you're subsidizing what you do not exactly know the amount of liters you consume per day, and by extension, monthly. You know, the figures are so widely apart that some will tell you, oh, Nigeria consumes about 48 million liters. Some will tell you, oh, it has come down by 19 million liters. Some will tell you it's the figure is 58 million liters, and some will tell you it's 42 million liters. If you check what you spend on subsidy per liter, and you have a gap of as much as 15, 18 million liters, then you know how much criminality, how much fraud, and how much wickedness obtains at that level. I think that the time, like I said, the time has come for a holistic forensic of what truly obtains in our oil sector. Um, we cannot keep looking the other way, whereas uh, big businesses milk this country and leave the Nigerian people poor, bare-chested, and hungry. Okay, still on oil and in the uh, Guardian newspaper, Nigeria okays $17.64 billion oil development plan as rigs jump to 30. What's your take? I think also that um, when you live in a country where the challenge over the years, and this has been since 1999, has been a call for the diversification. You want to diversify your cost of revenue and uh, you want to major on other sources of uh, income. When I think that there's something about uh, the NMPC Limited and its subsidiaries that are clearly been orchestrated to either divert uh, attention from. Remember that a few, a few weeks ago, Serap came up with uh, a litigation asking the NMPC to open its books. A few months ago, uh, the whistleblower, uh, um, Ubo, raised up issues about uh, several millions of uh, barrels of crude oil allegedly stolen and sold in China. A few months ago, it was Femi Falana who talked about uh, 52 million barrels of uh, crude oil that was allegedly stolen and sold in Pennsylvania in the United States of America. So there is a lot of under table dealings. Uh, there. So maybe they're trying to gaslight us with uh, issues about uh, readiness to produce more. But we must know first what we actually produce. We must also know what we actually earn. We also must know how much fuel we consume daily in this country. It's not rocket science, it's everywhere there. You can get the tankers and the facilities that are, you can, there are chips you can put on them and you can get to the filling stations across the country. You have, they have an association and then you know exactly, you can make a very reasonable average of what happens in that sector. But the fact is that those who pretend our country and our economy have refused to come back come straight, come open before the Nigerian people. Everything about figures of monies that they want to spend at the level of the NMPC and its subsidiaries comes to me with um, a huge bag of caution. 
because uh, they have been consistently less than uh, transparent to the Nigerian people and the, the, the Nigerian state. Okay, um, so now the, the next thing is, I don't know, because maybe I, because I don't understand it much, um, is talking about the interest rate hike. Uh, yesterday we were talking about the fact that uh, the Monetary Policy Committee raised the interest rate to uh, about 22.75 or so uh, percent, and this was supposed to curb inflation. Now the story is saying interest rate hike takes toll on stock market as investors lose 1.4 trillion naira. I mean, I, I don't understand. Is, is it helping us or it's killing us? I am not an economist, but I have listened to quite a few of the opinion of experts on it. Um, you know, tied to inflation, it's perhaps too much money in circulation. Tied to inflation is too much money in the market and little or nothing to buy. And um, a few of them that I listened to who are eggheads said that uh, the tendency of um, the hike in interest rate uh, helping the economy is high because it might uh, reduce the sum of monies that are perhaps uh, not necessary in the public space. Some of, all, of them have also said that uh, it means that those, only those who are anxious and interested, who are ready, willing, and able to invest, will go uh, borrowing, will go in search of funds. So I think that what it will do, according to Bismarck Rewana, will be to recalibrate the economy and, yes, that it will get bad or worse for a, a, a bit and then. Uh, pick up in, uh, in about five, six months, that uh, it is a necessary uh, step. It is, it is a worthy cause. I, I, I really think that fundamentally, as a layman in economics, what I know is that uh, the time has come for government to effectively look at the way of agriculture. Um, you have foods and grains that you can grow in three, four months. Nigeria, you can grow uh, crops three times a year. So um, rather than begin to mouth platitudes, it will get better, it will soon get better. Let us get to work and ensure that farmers are protected, which is very important. Uh, you know, when you talk about food security, you talk about security of farmers, you talk about national security. So these are fundamental things that I think that the state must and should begin to think of. Yeah, I agree with you. Farming is uh, very important. There even are varieties of rice that will take uh, two months to mature from the time you broadcast it to the, the, the harvesting time. And then vegetables take like uh, six weeks or two, three weeks, sorry, and so many other things that you can plant and harvest more than three times in a, in a year even. Okay, but right now... Um, they say the hardship in the country is tied to bad policies of uh, previous governments and all that. And there's this headline which, saying, which says, Pro Panel on Buhari's government, 30 trillion naira loan sits next week to summon CBN officials. Uh, they have said that um, a lot of things went on in the administration or during the administration of President Mohamedou Buhari. And now they're trying to probe. And Nigerians are just trying to see whether they should just forget about this or wait and see. This is another probe. Do you think it will see the light of day, even if it is done and recommendations are made? Let me say that repeatedly, I have always said that beyond this language, I'm not comfortable with the language probe because the immediate past administration as well as the present administration are of the same party, of the same stock. You know, the chairman of the party allegedly at some point was uh, caught on camera uh, uh, in Kano State, uh, over certain, you know, now we have a cliche, gondola, uh, and then nothing happened. He was elevated to become the chairman of the party. So I think that Nigerians have uh, the sufficient reason to be skeptical. But uh, above that, what is important for me is, you know, a few years ago, if you remember, I wrote an opinion as to how to uh, revive economies, you know, and that proposal, not less than uh, uh, four months after, it went into practice in, the, in Saudi Arabia. 
where the crown prince called all his brothers, nephews, cousins, and all that, and said, oh, we need to rejig our economy. We need to uh, bring the kingdom back to the, its leadership as the, in the Arab economy. And all of us have sinned. So I want everybody to open their banks, bring out all that you have stolen one way or the other, and let us flood this into the economy and rebuild our economy. Mm. Saudi Arabia did that. So many of the crown princes sold their estates in France, in the United Kingdom, brought back the money home. And today you see uh, Saudi Arabia attracting several businesses and innovation. Um, there are other countries that have followed suit. I, I think that um, we will be deceiving ourselves. We'll be hiding behind one finger to say, uh, when we say that we have to probe Buhari's government. Buhari's government was chief in larceny, chief in corruption, chief in thieving, and we know that. The governments before them were chief in larceny, chief in thieving, and chief in corruption, we know that. And we know that um, those who pretend the present administration, their hands are stained in the cookie, uh, cookie jar. We, we know, everybody knows everybody. You know, so what this administration must do, understanding the urgency of now and what, is to invite all these people. You know them. You have the figures. They are all with DFCC and ICPC. Call them to a meeting and tell them, look at the state of our economy. Um, everybody, that's why you have, even in America, you have the plea bargaining system. Everybody put before them their files and say, Nigeria needs these monies back. Nigeria must try with the return of these resources. You know, it's as bad as we heard that uh, a certain young man who is not up to 32 years old, BA2, the immediate past president, and some other two two persons have between them over $88 billion. It's that bad. And Nigeria goes up borrowing. Nigeria is borrowing $2.5 million, $1.5 billion, $3 billion, $3 billion. When individuals have enough money to rejig and resuscitate our economy. So what you do is call all of them. You have the papers. Let us stop this dance in the market square. You know, and then uh, it's a moment of patriotism. If you don't bring back 85% or 80% of these monies you stole, then we'll follow the uh, litigation full and square. You know, you will find out that in some of them are negotiating already as we hear. You find out that in two weeks, the dollar will come, the naira will come up to about two naira, two, 200 naira to a dollar. You find out that our monies will return and our economy will come back to life. You know, these are fundamental issues. It's not difficult. You know, it's about the political will. So when I hear people say, oh, they want to probe Mohamed Bouhari's administration, what is the probe about? When you know the figures are dead at the square, they make you laugh. They, I have never heard, not being an economist, I was economist and uh, uh, experts in forensic. What does ways and means mean to have arrogated or appropriated about 30 trillion naira to? What does it mean? Under what subhead, ways and means? That's how criminal. That was how wicked. That was how unfair. That was how inhuman they were, you know. So when you have such figures and all that, all you need to do is invite every one of the people involved, leave this language probe, and ask for our monies to be returned. And you see monies will come back. Those who were governors will bring back the monies they stole. Those who were ministers will bring back the monies they stole. Those who were directly involved at the banking level will bring back the monies they stole. And we'll have a massive reset of our economy. Mm. I think so. I abide that idea. Just bring it back. Invest in Nigeria, no matter what it is, and then there'll be That's a right. change. Uh, well, um, to to make sure that the economic downturn doesn't get too biting on the people, uh, the federal government says it will crash drug prices, and it is getting one billion dollars from Afrexim Bank. Uh, that's the headline on Punch newspaper. Federal government to. Uh, to crash drug prices, gets $1 billion from Afrexim Bank. Uh, what do you think about that? You, think, you, you just, um, the, news, the next news item was more like um, uh, a prediction of, um, or, um, a continuation of my line of thought. I, I still think 
that rather than go borrowing, if you know that we have all these monies in homes, we have them in raw cash. We have governmental operators. Let me tell you a forensic that was done a few weeks ago uh, about this rise in uh, the dollar, the the battle uh, against the Naira by the dollar. Let me, the forensic proved or showed that uh, this price surge comes even more often towards the end of the month when the federal government releases FAC to the states, the allocation to the states. And so what happens? So many of them, in the, either in the name of security votes or ongoing projects, buy off the dollar. And so the Naira is forced to go in search of the dollar. And, and because our economy is highly dollarized, we have a problem we have. Now, if you go borrowing, I don't have any logic. I don't have any excuse for it. I, don't, I can't even defend uh, the borrowing of a dime now when we know that there's so much money in this country and we know the operators who have these billions of dollars at home. And we're not saying use the language probe. You know, certain times uh, when you have a serious national situation, I told you it happened in Saudi Arabia. It's happened in Zambia. It has happened in Rwanda. It's happening across the world. It's happened in Argentina. People are calling back suspected public officers who milked their country to come. We're not going to kill you. Yes, it was your moment of madness. It was your moment of mistake. It was your moment of uh, primitive acquisition and greed. But our country is beyond this. You know, what we need is to get back our country. What we may need is to solve the questions of poverty. What we need is infrastructural development. Please give us back these monies. You will find out that it is for fear of prosecution or fear of serious punishment that so many of them are not bringing these monies. Now, when you have an understanding, give us at least 85% of these monies. Litigation will not give you back 20%. You have heard about instances of some people who allegedly stole 100 billion naira being given an uh, option of fine of 2 million naira. So who is the loser? You know, what we need is our monies. I don't, I will not discuss any, I will not give credence to any kind of borrowing. Even if you're telling me that that borrowing will give us electricity tomorrow, I will not. I've heard that all the lifespan of this democracy. We're borrowing for power project, we're borrowing for road construction, we're borrowing for to rejig the economy. And where are we? If you understand the anatomy, if you understand exactly where we are as a nation, you will know that all these borrowings are uh, perhaps, like the NMPC said, 38% <laughs> will go into uh, human resources. <laughs> you know, it will go into personnel management. And that's another cliche for corruption. So I think that what we must do is go get back our money from those who are within and outside and tell them, oh, it's you return the money, we um, we drop litigation, you know, it's plea bargaining. But we want this much. It is not about uh, relitting a better loot. No, we want this much and we must get it. Mm -hmm. If we don't get it, we'll now pull the full weight. That's when we bring the ICPC and the EFCC together on you. You find out that every former president of Nigeria, including the great uh, by Baba Obasanjo, Jonathan, everyone has something to return. And I think that we need all these monies. Our present president, who uh, um, we know the story and about what happened with Lagos, has so much to return. You know, when they return all these monies, we don't need to go borrowing. That's just a simple thing. And that should be the argument, just like a restructuring is becoming the argument everywhere. We must tell ourselves the truth. Mm. I was thinking, don't even return it to us. Just come and invest in our country. Because, you know, if you have a big company outside and you bring that company back, it will mean that it will employ a lot of people and the money will stay in circulation here. No, but the company will belong to their children and their children's children. We don't need, you don't give them credit for stealing. No. We give it back to the country and we will set up a team that will follow up the resources and follow it up because when, when they, they know that if they, do, if they do reloot it, if they they do have it, Nigerians will come out on them. That's the truth. You know, we need to create a sense of ownership 
of in this country, which is uh, to, to weave that our collective wealth is our collective patrimony. It does not belong to a few political office operators or political operators. No, our money is our money. You know, you don't uh, steal it, come back and then invest in uh, your uh, so so and so and so. No. Anyway, they, you know, they... we want uh, a country that build that builds on the people. The saying is, and with to, the people. The saying is, go to court, and then when you go to court, like you said, from from a hundred billion, you will find uh, two million, and that is ridiculous. It's we lose as a country all the time. Um, the the fact, yeah. The biggest headline on the Punch newspaper, the boldest headline is NCC rules out extension, telcos bar 12 million lines. MTN, Airtel, others vow to enforce NCC order by midnight Wednesday. Today is already Thursday, which means a lot of Nigerians uh, will be disconnected today. I was worried about the fact that, okay, directives can be given, but the people who gave the directive, did they take into consideration the infrastructure that was going to be able to uh, take all these people that might need to to link their lines to the NIN. Uh, are we talking about, uh, we, we did not even mention anything about security in all those things that um, they mentioned as being important, why we should link our numbers to NIN. When these things f first came up, the minister then said that it will help us in security and all that. But now nobody mentioned that. So I'm worried about the infrastructure. I'm worried about the fact that some people, even in the villages that may not even have heard that this directive was given, will be barred from, uh, will be disconnected, and so many other things. I don't know how you think about that. The deadline has already passed. Today is uh, uh, Thursday, 29th. Let me let me make you laugh. Um, I'm going to see from a different perspective, and this is very strong. You're talking about the people who are in the villages and who perhaps did not know about this protocol because there wasn't sufficient information. Um, I I will sue my mobile if I find out that my number was bad because for about three weeks now. I've been getting messages that they are likely to bar my number, one of my numbers. And every time I go back to their system, I find out that their system will tell me that your number has been connected, your SIN number, your NIN number has been connected. Because I've done all of that. Mm. But consistently, up until yesterday, my line was saying that you will be disconnected. And when I use their code, my number has been since connected because I did all of that. And there's several, I called some of my friends and they told me the same problem. They were having the same problem. And, uh, and then it was asking me to leave my business and the things I was doing to go to a nine mobile uh, uh, facility to confirm my name status. I laughed. It's just like um, a, a, a businessman telling the client who would, who wants to buy his goods to come to my house to buy my goods. You haven't brought it to me and you tell me if I don't come to buy it. I am the customer. I am king. If I have done the needful, don't continue to threaten me. And so I've been waiting for them to buy my line so that I'll get the lawyers. And this is, you know, I think that the time has come for a new regime of business in this country. We must have the ombudsman on board mm -hmm. as a major facility in government uh, who will protect the customer who will protect NCC has to rise to the, don't threaten Nigerians there are so many people who have done the needful who every day receive one text message or another from the same people so they should go and make sure that their facilities are working well that's point number one and then point point number two telling us that you will back 12 million lines how much information was circulated in my hometown of Ibuza? How much information went to Karen Hamuda? How much information went to Apakiliki? How much went to Edda in Oshun State? How did you carry the people along? So many people did not know about this. Is Nigeria all about the elites and the information that we have on TV and the newspapers? How did they engage the town criers? The day you hear the MTN will tell you everywhere you go, they all have all their cliches. But how much have you informed the people about the needful? I think that 
um, we must understand that citizenry and citizenship is at the core of leadership and nationhood. We must put a primacy on the Nigerian people. Learn to love your people. That's how leaders gain trust. Do not warn and threaten us. Love us and care for us. You know. So I hope and I pray that NCC, along with the telephone companies, will come back to the Nigerian people, properly inform them the lines that perhaps they have banned, according to them, since last night. They have to empower them, inform the people, and effectively follow them. Because let me tell you, they tell you that part of the reason uh, they are doing this is because they want to cop crimes. Oh my God, so many lines allegedly have been uh, connected. The villains and the brigands still use numbers. So I think that they must first of all watch the conspiracy between the network providers, the banks, and the chain of criminality. It's not just about the Nigerian Hoi Poloi. Who knows how many of them know about uh, online or criminality with their phones? So many of them are using, you know, most people do not even know that still in Nigeria, there are more people without Android phones than those who have Android phones. So let us wake up to the reality and learn to tell ourselves the truth. It was Utman Danfodio who said in uh, 1806 precisely, that conscience is an open wound, only truth can heal it. The time has come for us to learn to begin to tell ourselves the truth, live by the truth, and create a nation that is responsible and responsive to its people. Okay, um, we'll move to Daily Independent uh, newspaper now. Uh, I'm not taking the, the boldest headline for now. Uh, there's a small headline, top left corner, which says oh, Oron Sayez's report execution won't lead to job losses. Now, over the week, uh, when we're talking about this uh, report that is going to be implemented, first of all, we're just asking, you know, how, how is it that an administration that uh, widened its cabinet and said that if the cabinet <laughs> is not widened, it is, uh, the jobs will not, may not be done well, you know, it will lead to you know, some things being left undone. So he had to widen the cabinet to about 40 ministers and all that. And he's saying that he wants to um, cram everything into uh, fewer ministries, uh, agencies, and parastatals and all that. I'm worried on that, on that side. And, and then now they're talking about the fact that no jobs will be lost, which means the, 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 the number of people that will be paid and everything that needs to be done in those ministries, when they merge them, the uh, wage bill and the money that will go there will still be the same. And I'm wondering how this is going to even help to cut the cost of governance. Uh, I, I don't understand why this is. But they're saying no job will be lost, so everything will be intact, just that there will be called one name, because all the facilities will still be used under one umbrella. No, there, there is a difference between populism and proactive governmental uh, programmatic. Uh, mark my choice of word, populism. Yes, the Naira is on a free fall. Yes, the economy is on a nosedive. Yes, the need for urgent forensic approach to leadership. And so what comes as a popular uh, reaction, dust up the Rosaya report and throw it at the people. And it, without a proper forensic appraisal of how it will work. And then when you're beginning to see that there's a lot of pitfall, you begin the usual government stories. I don't want to use the word lies. Now, if you are implementing the Russia report, you will have job loss. That's the truth. If you are implementing the report and you're thinning down ministries, people will have to go. That is the truth. You know, like I said, so that mankind will learn to live by the truth. And I quoted Udman Damfodio, conscience is an open wound, only truth can heal it. How can you tin down the cost? Uh, how can you implement the Russian report without having job loss? Where in the world? How? You know, he's talking about tinning down the cost of governance and reducing the number of ministries. 
So why, uh, you know, falsehood is not a governmental policy. We must learn to come true to the people. But now you ask yourself, like my boy Elena Silk, Femi Falana raised the issues. He says most of these reports are gone, the time that we've gone beyond these reports, and that it must be subjected to a new forensic. And that is the truth. We live in a new world where you have e-governance. You have several things that you can do to cut down the cost of government and governance. You know, but when we continue to lie to ourselves, we find out that uh, it, it makes it more uh, difficult for people to believe us. I wonder what TUC and NLC will be telling them. If you are you uh, implementing the Orosaya report, and then if you have staff of uh, Voice of Nigeria, and you're merging Voice of Nigeria with Nigerian Broadcasting Commission, and you're merging them with Federal, uh, Federal Radio Corporation, that people will not go, then why are you merging them? Why are you uh, implementing the report if people will not go? But you see, I, I want to say that fundamentally, there are things to, do, to be done. Uh, sit down with the labor organizations, sit down with uh, TUC and LC, sit down with the, uh, the Minister of uh, uh, Justice and Attorney General, sit down with relevant government uh, agencies, and then look at those who are near retirement. Pay them their gratuities and pension and pay them a, severe, a severance allowance because people will go if you want to cut down the cost of governance. But, you know, very importantly and interestingly, in your opening uh, to that question, you raised, this is the same government that started, we have the largest cabinet in our democracy. You know, fundamentally, you know, why start with the ministers? Cut down the number of ministries. You have, we blame Buhari. Buhari had more minister, less ministers than Chinubu has. Obasanjo had less ministers. Yadwa had less ministers. Jonathan had less ministers. That's why I said less of the populism. We should learn to abide by the truth, tell ourselves the truth. You know, if you want to implement the policy, start with your government. Start with, or else any report is, way, uh, is a report that must be subjected to an overhaul, a forensic. How does it apply with contemporary times? How does it apply with governance in 2024? That was what uh, the Lenin Singh Falana raised as an issue. And even use the word, this is outdated. I don't think it is outdated. I think that there must be an overhaul and a forensic. Don't just tell us that you will implement it uh, uh, um, as, 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 the, uh, as it was released. Don't tell us that. There's so much to be done about it. And then you're telling us, when Orasa in no uncertain terms said that we had a bloated civil service. We had a government that was too large and too cumbersome. And so, so many people will have to go. And then you're turning around to tell, so you're not interested in even implementing it. So I think there's a lot that must be done by this government. Uh, a more by Onanuga, uh, Ajumi Gilale, and several people who speak on behalf of this government must understand that truth is a beacon of trust. If you want people to trust your government, tell them the truth. Stop gaslighting the people. Stop telling NLC and TUC that you will implement or else I Irish report without job loss. That's the greatest falsehood known to humankind. And that wasn't the motive of that report. The motive of the report was to downsize governance. And that's, for me, where I think that this government almost always, and even the middle past government, thinks that falsehood and lies is an organic instrument of state policy. It is not. Mm. All it does is make people doubt you more and more and make people lose faith in governance. True. Well, uh, unfortunately, this is where we have to drop it, even though there are still many more headlines we could have treated. But we'd like to thank you for your time this morning. Can I steal in something? Because it's very important. Uh, the headline about you, I don't know whether you deliberately left it, but it's important. Uh, government talking about the restructuring, uh, that they will, they will. I think it's important, and that's, that will make me a fan of this government if it truly wakes up to the realities and the need for the restructuring of the Nigerian economy and the Nigerian state. You know, you, you cannot have a government that is unwieldy and involved in everything in this country. Government is involved in supplies of newspapers to the federal government college in my hometown in Ibuza. 
government is involved in the purchase of computer chips for the federal government college in Boko. Government is involved in supply of fertilizers to farmers in Karunamuda. And no government that does all of this can succeed. So I think that the time is, and very properly now, uh, for us to challenge government to an overhaul, a restructuring of not only the governmental protocols, but uh, the holistic appraisal of uh, a legal protocol, the okay. concurrent list, the residual list, and the exclusive legislative list mm. must be overhauled by both government to the National Assembly. Uh, they must overhaul it and ensure that the states and the local government take up sizable uh, duties in government, and the federal government should just concern themselves with defense, money, monetary policy, custom and exercise, immigration, and a few of the things that are necessary to make Nigeria work. Okay. Only then can you have a country that is functional. All right. Up until now, we have an absolutely dysfunctional nation, and we must make this country work again. Yeah, we must make this country work. When that time comes, I hope they will come back to us, the citizens, and help, uh, and so that we can help to define what restructuring is. It cannot be restructuring according to somebody, and uh, the whole nation is thinking about restructuring in another light. We do hope that they will not take us for granted when that time comes and will get us all involved. Let's see what type of restructuring we want. Thank you so much, Prof, uh, for being a part of our program this morning. The pleasure is mine. God bless Nigeria. Amen to that. Okay, we've been talking with Professor Chris Mustafa Wokobia Jr., convener Country First Movement on uh, um, Off the Press this morning. We'll take a very short break and return with our first hot topic. Stay with us.